Have you ever wished you could sit in the studio with your favourite music producer and let them just take you through your favourite track, exactly how it was made, all the tricks that were used to make it? I'm going to show you how you can do this. This is one of the most powerful ways I've found to give me inspiration, a new level of skill in using my tools and a ton of creative ideas to use in my own production. And I've seen a dramatic increase in the quality of my tracks from doing this. So what is it? It's precisely recreating my favorite tunes. But you're probably thinking, but how on earth do I do that? So let's go through it together by recreating The Mighty Terrorist by Renegade, AKA Ray Keith. So first we need to figure out what kit and what samples the original artists use. An amazing resource for this is whosample.com. It's great, but it's not always 100% right. So for example, here, one of the samples listed is this, Night Porter by Japan. <laughs> so it does sound similar, but clearly it's not the same track. And in fact, Ray Keith said himself, so I did my own version of their riff, replaying the piano so I didn't get because it wouldn't be sampled. It's kind of ironic because every single sound in this track is made of samples of other people's music. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, of course not. So what he did, he used a Korg M1 and played something similar to that. So we've got this M1 house split, absolutely classic sounding dance music used in many a track. So I just recreated this by ear. From a music theory point of view, it's very simple. We've just got a D minor chord and an A minor chord, just the white notes. But rather than just playing, Ray has split up the notes and influenced by the Japan track, an octave down on the A, and then we just got a bit of nice variation here. And then here we've got just doubled up some extra notes. So an E and a C. And also we've just got a nice bit of delay. We've got a quarter note delay. Dun, 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 dun. We'll look at where that comes from in a moment. I also just brightened it up a bit to get close to the original track. But I think it's bang on basically. There are some simple but really powerful things we can take away from this. So you can make something 10 times more interesting just by doing some fairly simple changes, breaking up the notes into melodies and making simple additions like here. So luckily, Who Sampled actually has virtually every other sample listed for this track. So that gives us the pieces of the puzzle. So now we just need to put them together. So here are the pieces. We've got the piano, effects, Vocals, classic Reese bass, dub bass, got the Amen break, and we've got the Think break. But how do we take all these things and make terrorists? Pop quiz, what track is this sound from? This is a sample from Jashaka, how he made that sound. I'm pretty sure he would have used a dub siren with the LFO on the pitch basically and just caught it at the right time and added some spring reverb, which is massive in dub and also the delay. He's got the same kind of delay, this quarter note delay. So that's where I think Ray Keith got the influence to put the quarter note delay on. So what I did, I sampled it. So I just took this first bit without the delays and then added my own delay with a quarter note to get this kind of sound and then bit of EQ. So there's also this little swoosh sound. It's just a little bit later on in the track. So I just created two layers in Tile Sampler. Set one to one key and one to this key. 
So these kind of effect sounds, they may not seem like much, but they're really important in keeping people's interest and giving structure to their track. And I've actually created a sample pack with 50 rises, impacts and effects for doing that. And it's just 10 pounds. Check out the link in the description. So I'm dying to show you like the actual, the main bits of the track, the bass and the drums. But first, we've got a few more sounds to look at. An interesting thing about that tune is that I met two of my heroes, it's Smith and Mighty. I used to buy a lot of their stuff back in the day. In Renegade Terrace, there's there's a bass line that goes bomb, 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 bomb. Yeah. Smith and Mighty did a version of Anyone Who Had A Heart. Okay. And they used a similar type of bass line. Right. And when I told him that inspired me to make the tune, he went off. And I was like, no, seriously. Similar kind of bass line or the actual same bass line? So I'm pretty sure he just sampled their bass and added it to this tune. So let's just listen to their tune. So this section of the track, just sample one note and then resequenced it. I actually love this for two reasons. Firstly, he added a bass line on top of one of the fattest basses of all time, the Reese bass. And this is just such a great example of it. If it sounds good, it is good. So you won't find any production advice telling you, Oh, if you've got a massive bass line, yeah, just add another massive bass line. Like it's kind of a massive mistake, but somehow it works. And the second thing I love about this is that there's a clear dub influence in this track, but to me, it doesn't sound at all like dub and it's not trying to be dub. It's something completely new, but it's taking influences and going somewhere else with it. And this is the thing with music and why I'm passionate about sampling is that no music exists in a vacuum. We're all influenced by other things. And that's kind of the point. That's kind of how it works. Well, basically I made that tune because because that was my version of dub and I just got sick of people just sampling any old reggae tune. Right, so I, there's a sample just on the start of that, that whoop, whoop noise and that is on that. that so that was, that was my record in it, I've got a yeah. sample. So that was my interpretation to everyone of like, well, this is jungle, but it just doesn't have to be ripped out of some reggae tune. This, that okay. was my version of dub. Right. So I'm dying to get to the bass and the drums, but let's just quickly look at the vocals. These are from a little Aladdin's Cave of Sounds, the zero G data file sample packs. They were used a lot and it's a great resource often if you're trying to recreate a track from back in the day. So firstly, we've got this, which is just the whole sample. So this is from zero G data files one. And then the other sound we've got is this which actually if I play the whole sample, you know, you might not recognize it. If you heard that whole sample, you might not get that that was from there. And again, this is another massive lesson for me about working with samples. I've come to realize that the magic, it's often in simple little details, just like, where you begin the sample and where you place it in the tune. And that's usually it. Often they don't even pitch things. It's not about crazy sound manipulation or fancy effects, which is what I used to think. I mean, the Amen doesn't need any introduction. One of the cornerstone breaks of drum and bass, probably the most important one. And the Think Break is another one. And they're both in this tune. One of the things that made this track so outstanding was the way that at the end of every bar, the drums go, Da, da, da. I used to work in boogie times at the time and the amount of people that came in and say, what's the tune? It goes, da, 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 you know, and so uh, it was really recognizable. So in a way it's so simple, but it's just so effective. So this is quite easy to do in Ableton. So we're just. So we're just repeating this really. And it's, it's very, as I say, very easy to do in audio. He obviously didn't have Ableton at the time. I recreated it more how it would have been done using a sampler with a couple of zones. And it sounds like this. And actually that revealed something that I'd got wrong because I did it in Ableton. I had it more like this. And actually that little bit of silence add something to the track and that's a feature of the original track. So we do have a little bit of a change. It's not a massive thing, but here on bar 113, it's a little bit differently chopped. We've got this extra do, 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 do. 
<laughs> One final thing before we get to the proper drop, how the think break is chopped. What we've got is this part of the think break and it's pitched up. I'm using repitch in Ableton and it's literally just this part of the break. So it's this break. That part of it got quite a lot of high pass EQ on it. So we're just repeating this really. And then at the end, we just, the sample plays out longer. So we get this different snare here. It just adds so much energy for it to come in with another break. And the way it's been chopped as well, just sounds so good. Did you sample that from someone? I mean, I know yes, that I, I, I know I'm not the only person that sampled terrorist the respace. Yeah, they probably everyone re sampled it off of me. But the original tune was um, by one of the masters of Detroit techno, Kevin Saunderson. Right. I saw, but there was a and the track was called. Reese. Reese. And um, that's why we call it Reese. But there was a keyboard that you could get that sound from called the Prophecy Keyboard. And okay. I actually ended up buying one okay. and then selling it. There's some confusion over which synth was used to make it. There was a synth called a Prophecy, but it came out seven years after the Reese track was made. I think Ray misspoke. I think he meant to say profit, and you can make a Reese bass on a profit, but in actual fact. When I was creating that bass, and I, I created it on a CZ-1000. But how did Ray use the sample? So if we listen to the original track, it's not long enough to get the Reese sound. What I'm sure he would have done is loop it. Here in Tile Sampler, can you hear how this can just go on? So the thing is we need to get a nice loop point in the sampler. It's a bit of a lost art. And I think it's an important skill to have in your arsenal. If we don't get it right, we get clicks. So that doesn't sound good. So a really useful tool we have is snap this snap X. It's snap to zero crossing. And we just bit of trial and error. So let's have a quick look at the notes and it's just so simple, but it just works so well. It seems easy, but just try it, you know, try and get something really good with just three notes. And the other thing that I think is amazing about this tune is it takes you by surprise because for some reason we hear it on its own and we start to think that this is the first note. So we start to think it's this. And then, so we're expecting this. But it's not that. And that's why I find it always takes you by surprise, this drop. It's, it seems to come too early. So I don't know about you, but I still remember being at a rave, like in a field somewhere in the morning and you hear that piano and you hear that bass. And it's just such a moment and then you're waiting for the drop and the way it takes you by surprise like that is just the icing on the cake. Kevin Saunderson himself sampled other tunes for his records. So to really understand the influence of the influence of this tune, check out this video.